and welcome to another episode of Happy Mum, Happy Baby, the podcast. <laughs> Today's guest is, well, she's the queen of presenting, I would say, <laughs> the absolute queen. It's Lorraine Kelly! Yay, it's so nice to be here. Thank it's you so very nice much. to see you. <laughs> I know, it's weird it being this way around. I know, but it's good. I like it. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> Do you feel relaxed? <laughs> I do, actually. It's lovely. Then here my cup of tea. I'm totally fine. It's all good. It's I quite like you. this. Yeah. You've got the book. I know. This is all about shining. Yeah. It's called Shine and it's kind of... I turned 60 and I've managed to sort of absorb over the years yeah. so much knowledge and so many experiences. You're talking to people like you, talking to lots and lots of different people and I just wanted to kind of give some of that back. Yeah. It's a wee bit like when you climb up the ladder of your career. Don't pull the ladder up. You know, leave it down. Let as many people follow you as possible. And it's a wee bit like that. I just want to share everything with everyone and share my experiences of being a mom and being a wife and being a daughter and, yeah. you know, sort of all the problems and the good times and the bad times. You know, everything, absolutely everything. And I didn't know that you grew up in the Gobbles. Yeah, in yeah. Glasgow. My mum and dad were really young when they got married. They were only, my mum was 17 when she got pregnant and they were just 18 when they got married. So terribly, terribly young and they didn't have anything. Yeah. You know, they were really, really hard up and they got this wee tiny room. Now it would be called a studio bijou apartment, <laughs> but back then Very it was fancy. basically a room, tiny, yeah. tiny little room with a recess for the bed and an outside loo. Um, and from there, they just worked and worked. That's where I get my work ethic from, from both of them. Worked really, really hard for me and my brother to give us the best possible life and, you know, be ever grateful to them for that. What's the age gap between you and your brother? Six years. Okay. Six years. And I was a horrible sister to my baby brother. He was an angel. <laughs> oh, really? It didn't help that he looked. I mean, I was six years old, you see, and that's like, you know, being usurped by this perfect child that looked like a cherub <laughs> that just landed on a cloud from heaven above. There's this wee cherub and I didn't like him. I used to nip him. <laughs> <laughs> I was horrible to my wee baby brother. But now we get on great. Now we get on really, really well. But I did, for a short while, I did feel kind of like, who's this little cuckoo in the nest? You know, and I think a lot of kids feel like that, actually. A lot mm. of children feel like that. So it's always given me a bit of an insight into friends' kids, you know, when, whenever a friend has a, a new baby. Yeah. You know, I always make a huge fuss. And I always make sure that when I go and see them and everybody brings the baby presents, that I always make sure I've got a present for them too. And I always say to them, oh, I'm here to see you, but can you introduce me to your wee baby brother or sister? I'd like to see them, if you can be bothered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't this mind. is an afterthought. You know, but I think it's really important to make a fuss of them as well, because yeah. the, otherwise their nose gets out of joy. Yeah. And it's not fair. Were you aware that your parents were young? Very much so, because everyone else at school, their parents seemed an awful lot older. Like mm. They were almost like, a, a, you know, they were a generation above where my mum and dad at that time, you know, that was sort of like when I was born in 59, end of 59. So in the 60s, when I was growing up, my mum and dad were listening to the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and, you know, Bob Dylan and, and Dusty Springfield and all these amazing people. Whereas, you know, the older people weren't listening to that. They just weren't. You know, my mum and dad were listening to Pirate Radio, Caroline and all that. And, and you know, they were really, really quite trendy. Um, and that was that was good. Mum wore mini skirts and she wore her hair up and lots of makeup and all of that. So that was great. It was good, really good. <laughs> Did you ever think about you starting a family? And what? And Do you know? I was never uh, someone growing up. I was never somebody that desperately wanted children. It was one of those things that I thought, well, you know, if the time is right, that'll happen, and who knows? And I was even, you know, even when Steve and I got married, I was still quite surprised to find out that I was pregnant it wasn't oh, really? something had you not started not you really, thinking about not, it I mean we hadn't you know we were, we were having great fun but we hadn't, <laughs> we hadn't sort of decided that we were going to try for a baby but it was inevitable in a way you know we were lucky yeah. that I was able to get pregnant but I do remember thinking oh my goodness and then thinking I mean I must have been what 33 I guess when I got pregnant and I remember thinking to myself I don't know if I'm grown up enough for this, this is <laughs> I don't still think I'm not grown up for goodness sake at this age but I remember I remember it being completely quite overwhelming actually you know it was it was really overwhelming and and amazing mm -hmm. you know I'd, and I was really surprised Giovanna I was so surprised as I wasn't a particularly maternal person I was so surprised that when she was born this I mean I know everybody tells you about this love that you feel and I couldn't believe the feelings I just couldn't because I looked at her and I thought she was exactly what I'd imagined her to be yeah. in my dreams I'd imagined yeah. her wee face she's like a little a little rosebud that's why we call Rosie but um I, I, and also I looked at her and thought aha now everything makes sense this is what it's all about it's all about having wee ones I get it now it was just like click just all went into really the, yeah everything just clicked into place I was very lucky she was a good kid very easy right very, very easy. But I was like, I mean, people were asking me if I was pregnant six months after she was born. You know, it took me, it took me a long time to but lose, you lose were, weight. So we're jumping around a bit, but yeah. you were straight back 
into work. Three, you gave yourself three months off. Well, it was initially. a bit, it was a strange one yeah. because what happened was I was working and I always, always worked. You know, mm. I did my, I, I worked as a um, correspondent for TVAM and then I was asked to come down and be on the sofa for a week. And the week turned into a month and then... And that must be difficult as well. And that, was that a part of you not really knowing whether you wanted kids? Indeed. Because you know you have to unsettled. step away. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. quite unsettled. And I never asked to be on the sofa. I never imagined that I'd be sitting on the sofa with giant hair and a big pink jacket <laughs> on and with tons of makeup on. I never thought that would be me because yeah. I was like a, a journalist out getting the story. That's how I always was. Um, and yeah, it was... What happened was I got pregnant and then, back then, you never really saw pregnant ladies on television, pregnant women on TV. Um, and Diamond was a trailblazer mm -hmm. um, and I think breakfast telly and daytime telly are always trailblazers anyway um, but, and I worked right up until two weeks I didn't realise you know I, I thought I had a month off but I didn't so two weeks after I stopped working and I was enormous I was an <laughs> easter egg on legs I was absolutely <laughs> huge um, but it was it was fine I felt great I was fine you know I didn't feel ill um, I, I, I was abs I sailed through it actually I just got incredibly big was it something that you referenced on TV as well the fact that you were pregnant oh, or was well it, it was yeah. the, you, you, know, I mean, <laughs> you could not I mean, there was oh my goodness me but I do remember because in those days you did six right up until half past nine so that was quite long, a long yeah. a long time but you know I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a stalwart and I just kind of got on with it um, and then then when I had Rosie, I had her in June and I was supposed to go back to work in September, but I basically got a call telling me not to bother. Um, my contract wasn't being renewed. I'm freelance. I'm still freelance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My contract wasn't being renewed and they were going with someone else. It so effectively, you were... So I was effectively yeah. booted out. Yeah. Um, but luckily, luckily in these things, it's amazing. Karma is a wonderful thing um, because it all worked out well in the end because a, a mum and baby company wanted to do a sponsored mum and baby item on the show and they wanted me to do it. So they brought me back. Uh, they brought me back in the November, I think. So I had a few months of going around the country with my CV under one arm and my baby under the other, you know, with the, with the breast pump and all the rest of it. So glamorous. <laughs> um, looking for work. And basically, you know, because you have to. You how know, old, how old were Rosie have been at that point? Uh, oh, months. Tiny. Really so small. So did you feel... So at what point were you told that you weren't... Your contract wasn't Well, get she baby? was... She would have been... So that would be June, July. She was less than three months old. Yeah, less than three months old. So that was really hard. Did you feel like it kind of... Because that must have been such a big shadow because you are the main... You, at that point, you were yeah. the main earner. Of course, of Did course. Did it feel like it overshadowed or kind yeah. of... Was, you yeah, know. it did actually. And it did ruin in many ways a time where you should be really enjoying mm. your baby and now of course it's, it's so much better because people can take if you can you know, if you're not freelance obviously and quite rightly people should get proper maternity and paternity leave yeah. I think it's vital because those those times you don't ever get them back you, yeah. know, you really don't but it did turn out all right in the end I, we did the mum and baby slot it was very successful and then in the January I got my own show so it was, <laughs> I was wonderful. Like, a little bit more than successful <laughs> it was great it was like hurrah hurrah <laughs> Because I got back and it meant I didn't have to go up at three in the morning anymore and I had much more time with, with my daughter and, and it, so it worked out really, really well. If you're going to do a job having kids, breakfast telly is wonderful. I mean, you're permanently tired. Yeah. You're permanently tired anyway yeah. when you've got a baby. I mean, everybody knows that. You're absolutely exhausted. I mean, I, I experienced levels of exhaustion I didn't really know existed, you know. Suitcases under my eyes. Um, and, and like I was saying as well, I, it took me a long time to get back into shape. It took me years to get back into shape and so it should did you ever what like was that ever a worry about you know not so much because of the job I was doing because it was never you know breakfast telly is not about looks I was never mm. hired for my looks or my figure or how I you know how I appeared on the outside thank the lord because basically I looked like a bag of washing you know when in those early days I did I, I have was, seen no clips of you looking like a no, bag of honestly, washing honestly well you they are there Giovanna they are there you know the, the cardigan wilderness years you know and I've got this big giant cardio on, and I'm, I'm kind of like my hair's all standing on it <laughs> but yeah you go through all of that you do and it's um and you've just got to get on with it and mm. you know that was I didn't have a choice you just you just get on with it but what what joy she has brought to my life it was like it completed everything it was amazing amazing because you you went how long has has your show been running now because obviously it's had a few different names 20 well Rosie's 25 right. so me doing my own show is 25 years but then I worked in telly 10 years before she was born so my own show is 25 years can it's you imagine if so say that I had you'd never had that call to say we're not going to renew the contract yeah. and then the baby brand hadn't come if Imagine if that hadn't all fallen know, into place. I know, it was amazing. It was just, it was meant to be. Yeah. It was sort of meant to be. It's just uh, just incredible. And we didn't have any more kids. A great a great source of, um, a great, yeah, a great source of regret for me. Mm. It wasn't something that I, 
you know, that we didn't go down the road of IVF or anything like that at all. It was that one of those things that we thought to ourselves, if it happens, it happens. Um, and then the years go by and all of a sudden you're like 44 and it hasn't happened and you sort of think... Maybe it's just not to be. We're so lucky yeah. to have a healthy, happy little girl. Um, and although, yeah, it would have been lovely. I mean, I would have had a football team. Yeah. But it just wasn't to be. It just wasn't to be. And and like I say, time sort of ran away with us. And by the time we'd sort of gone, oh, it, was too, it really was too late. It really was too late. Rosie was five when you had a miscarriage. Yes, she was. Which you've spoken about. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was... That was, a, that was a really difficult time. And I think, and I, and I do talk about it in the book because I think, yes, of course, we should absolutely sympathise with the, you know, the, the woman who's going through this. Mm. But nobody ever asked after Steve. Nobody ever said, how are you? Very few people, actually. The only people that did, funnily enough, were friends who'd experienced it themselves. Um, and sadly, as we all know, far too many people experience it. I yeah. mean, I was told one in three, which is horrendous. Mm. Absolutely horrendous. But yeah, I think we've got to be a little bit more consider it about everyone um, and, and not just partners but extended family because you do mourn something that's not going to happen you know it's well, just I think you know you you start seeing ahead yeah, of so course, you would have plan. images of, Absolutely, of the baby of Rosie course, and... yeah I was thinking because that would have been 2000 and um, that was like we were saying oh gosh we're going to have a millennium baby and it's odd to think that there could be a little one running around 19 years old now yeah. <laughs> it was, it's, it's strange and it was really sad what did help me though um, by being open about it and talking about it at the time because obviously I'm off work and you need to tell people why and that wasn't easy but the response I got from viewers was un Did you tell them this when you came back yeah. what had happened? Yeah, I did. I thought it was important. I thought it was important to to be honest. And and why should I not say anything? That's for for nearly 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah. That's incredible. Well, we had to. I, I felt we had to because, you know, viewers were asking what was wrong. And then when I talked about it on the show, not not in great depth, but I just mentioned it, you know, and I said, and, uh, just want to let you know that's why I was off. And, and thank you very much. Everyone was so great. And, you know, mentioning the hospital who'd looked after us and everything. And we just were inundated with letters mm. and, you know, and um, really, you know, women sharing, really brave, brave women sharing their experiences with me, you know, long letters, really heartfelt, you know, people had taken real time and trouble. And, and that actually really helped me. It really did. It, it was, and again, you know, our viewers are amazing and that, that helped a lot. I think there's so many times in motherhood where you feel like you're on your own. Absolutely. Or you, you feel like you've failed. You or do, you're, you're you the do. the only one yeah. doing that. And, and you're yeah. never quite sure that you're doing the right thing. And of course, it's, it's in a way, it's it's better now because we've got things like, like your podcast, mm. we've got things like Mum's Net, we've got all of these forums. And that's one of the great things about social media. I mean, there's a lot of darkness, yeah. as we know. There's a real dark side to it with, with bullying and, you know, trolls and all the rest of it. But there are shining examples of bringing people together. And, you know, if you're just feeling a bit, I would have loved to have something that I could have just gone on the internet and gone, I'm not quite sure about this. Does anybody else feel the same as I do? Um, am I giving her the right food? Should she be doing that? Mm -hmm. is, is it right that she's not sleeping and doing the day? Whatever, whatever. It just would have been lovely to have had that feedback, instant feedback to say, you're okay. Yeah. You're doing fine. Because that's all you want <laughs> as a mum. Totally. You just want somebody to say, it's fine. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's fine. You're doing all right. And uh, how for how long did you split your time between Scotland and England? Well, we lived um, we lived in Cookham. We lived in Berkshire when Rose was born. She was born in High Wycham, um, and we stayed there for till she was twelve. And then ah. when she was going to high school, um, Steve had always said he wanted to go home, and we'd always said that we would go home for her secondary school education and should she want to go into university. So we moved back to Dundee, which meant that I was up and down a lot. Yeah. Um, I was pre-recording some shows, but not all of them. So I was up and down a lot, which was hard. It was hard. And Steve became the parent that said, eat your Brussels sprouts and brush your teeth. And I became the one that sort of bounced in, you know, and it was like, yeah, <laughs> the fun one. yeah, I was. It was like good cop, bad cop. But they, those two have got an amazing relationship, you know, really incredible. Um, as have we, it's very mm. strong. But Giovanna, she's my daughter. She's, I'm yeah. not her friend. And this I is really interesting because this you is something that, that Liz Earle said when she was on the podcast. Yeah. She was like, you know, my it's kids so will have true. many friends. Absolutely. They only get one mum mm. and I need to be her mum. And it's a different mom. relationship. Mm. It's a totally different relationship. And I don't think for a nanosecond she tells me everything. I never told my mum everything. It's, that's what your friends are for. Your yeah. friends are for that. But but we do have a really, really close relationship. She's far more grown up than me, like I said. Um, and she, I go to her for advice. Really? I do. Absolutely, I do. Because she's a real little wise owl. 
um, and and she is great. You know, she really she's very clear thinking and very organised, and she's she's a good kid. And likewise, she comes to me for advice too. But it's an absolute two way street. Yeah, it's really good. Did you experience mum guilt of not being there? Oh, absolutely, of course I did. So now you're providing, you're providing. You know, you're, you're always doing you're it always for her. feeling guilty. And Steve, he's worked as well. He's working as a freelance cameraman, but it was difficult because he had to fit in with my hours and with her yeah. hours, and of course she's the priority and everything else just fitted around her. I mean, I remember vividly. I used to do a radio show. Uh, in the morning um, and I remember she was going to be in the uh, nativity play now they were two and a half years old so the nativity basically you <laughs> disorganised know, chaos beyond but isn't yeah. that the joy of joys yeah. the joy of joys and she was going to be Mary Aww. big deal yeah. huge so I said in the morning I said look I'm really sorry but my baby's in the nativity play and I can't come in it was, I think it was like I gave them like a week's notice I said so I won't be in but don't worry I've got somebody to fill in for me and they said mm-hmm. no and I said, excuse me? And they said, no, 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 I'm sorry. That's the only day off I've ever asked for. And I actually got to the point of, I said, I, if I don't, I, I'll have to leave. Because I know this is, I love doing the radio. It's top radio. I love yeah. doing it. But this is like one of those moments in your life that you cannot ever get back. And I'll tell you, I cannot remember one single show I did on that radio show all those years ago. So that's like 20 or 22 years ago. I remember every nanosecond of that nativity play. I cried the whole way through. You're going to make me cry with that comment. I know, yeah. it was, it's true. And it was like the baby Jesus was upside down. <laughs> Joseph was picking his nose. The three wise men fell over. It was utterly joyful. It was the best thing I've ever seen in my life. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And there are just some things that you cannot, you cannot, pass up there's nothing that's more important than that so luckily they sort of said oh okay then you can have this one day off <laughs> and I was like, phew thank goodness thank goodness I wouldn't have missed that for the world yeah and how has it been because obviously now you've seen so many different stages yeah. of motherhood and mm. with Rosie growing up have there been times because I think it's all all about push and pull yeah and sometimes you feel you're really united and other times you feel like you've kind of fought like pulled apart a bit yeah it's it is hard in every stage I mean I've been really lucky that she's been such a good kid and she's never really given us any real massive problems of course we went through the teenage angst mm-hmm. and I found a picture the other day I was howling I sent it to her and she was really laughing it was a picture of us on holiday and I've always I've always got this thing of oh our family holidays weren't they amazing weren't they good and they were you know they really were but it was this picture of her and it is I mean there's a bubble coming out of her head just saying it's so unfair and I hate you <laughs> you know that face, yeah. that face and it was just and I said to her I said oh here we are a happy memory from your dear we were howling with laughter it was really funny but really she's never really caused me any angst all the angst has come from me Mm. you know from me feeling guilty and for me like sort of like feeling I should be with her more and and that's really hard and I don't think there's any way that you can ever change that I think if you're a working mum you will feel guilty yeah end of you know I remember one time being at work and unfortunately there was an accident she got bitten by a dog it was only a wee nip on her face but it was like but I just I just went I'm I'm away sorry you know as soon as that as soon as the show was over I was gone yeah you know they didn't tell me what happened until afterwards or but otherwise I would have got up and walked out Mm -hmm. halfway through an interview they told me right away I come off here and it was just like home like that because there are times where you know work is great but your children are everything. It's about getting that perspective, isn't it? Yeah, and it's getting a balance. You've mm. got to get a balance too. And I think it's good that she saw me working. It's good that she grew up, you know, so seeing both of us working, you know, her dad and me. Um, and she grew up surrounded by, and it's a lovely world, you know, it's a yeah. lovely world. And she grew up with that. Not that not that impressed until maybe you would get Westlife in. And then, and then, or me today. You would get there then, and then it was great. You know, all of a sudden I was cool. Um, but yeah, she's grown up round about it. And it's, and it, and think it's really good for our daughters especially our daughters mm. our sons too to see that their mums are out there working away and yeah you can do all these wonderful yeah. things it's great did you ever, ever feel like you struck a balance oh I hope I did but I'm not sure that I did I hope I did and um, not always I didn't always get it right I don't think anybody ever does I think there's times when you know I was working or I was stuck at an airport or I was hyperventilating in traffic trying to pick it up from nursery or school um and no I don't think I always got it right but I think what she knows is that I really tried. I tried really hard. You know, I tried my best. Yeah. And how, so that bond that you had was instant. Yes. And, uh, and it sounds like that's carried on. Oh, very much so. Very so much was so. it heartbreaking when she moved away? It was. Giovanna, I brought my daughter up to be an independent woman. Yep. And then she is an independent woman. How dare she? <laughs> I know you really want them to be but at the same time you really don't want them to be so oh it was going to university it was the cliche 
when I left her, you know, in her little tiny, because she went into rooms the first year. Right. You know, she just went into halls, into wee tiny, this teeny tiny little room. And we brought some of her stuff and we, we you know, we left her to, to unpack. And I just cried all the way back home. I was like, I can't believe my wee bit. And sat in a room. You know, and thought, oh my it's gosh. The thing is that it's, it's that horrible. time that passes as well. It makes you realise that oh, how much time has gone. By. I know, I know. Cause, and I said to Steve, two minutes ago, she was a little fat baby. Mm. And now she's a young woman and she's she's going to, she's in university and she's not. And all of a sudden, it's like when they go to school, you lose them a wee bit because they've gone to school and their yeah. lives get bigger. You know, and that's right. That's the way it should be. And then they go to secondary school and then they go to university and of course they're away. They're gone. They're no longer sort of like, it's not that you can tell them what to do. I don't mean that. But it's just that they they become less of a part of your life in a way. Yeah. Because you're not seeing them every single day and seeing them have, you you know, and making sure they're eating properly and making sure they're taking care of themselves and they're doing their homework and they're doing all these things they're supposed to do. But of course, it's of course you've got to. I mean, it would be ridiculous. <laughs> I'm a 25-year-old girl still with us, you know, still saying, eat your Brussels sprouts. I mean, that would be daft. She's got to go and fly. That's what mm. you want them to do. But it's blinking hard. A lot harder than I thought it would be. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to tell her that, though, because I don't ever... I never told her. I said, oh, we're really... You know, we're sad and we miss you a lot. But I didn't ever want her to feel in any way guilty that, she, you know, poor yeah. old mother's crying in a room because that would be really a shame for her. I don't want her and to feel like that. And you her room, like, as it was for a while. She's got a room in her house that's exactly... I mean, she's always got a room. <laughs> I know she only comes home. She's coming home at Christmas time. And I know she only comes home not that much from Singapore, but her room is there mm. with all her stuff. It's all there. And all her, her like winter clothes are in the wardrobe because she doesn't need them. Because <laughs> it's really hot in Singapore, obviously. She doesn't need them, but they're all still there. Haven't thrown a thing away, not one thing. Do you ever find yourself going in there now? Totally. Really? Absolutely, absolutely. Just I'm pretending that I'm cleaning. I mean, just making sure that it's all right. But I just, just sometimes look quite like... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's that thing. I mean, it's brilliant now. Again, your social media being so fantastic that we can do FaceTime and WhatsApp yeah. and things. Um, that's wonderful. But you can't cuddle them. Mm. Or you can't, I know it sounds mad, you can't smell them. They're here. Yeah. You can't do that when it's um, when it's WhatsApp. But uh, at least I can see her little face and that's a huge big thing. Well, I, I've been thinking recently, so growing up, I got a lot of my hugs and stuff from friends or yeah. partners. And, and then um, having kids, all my hugs yeah. are from them. Yeah. And actually when they go, where oh, do my hugs come from? I know, it's really sad. It really is. Because that's the first thing I do when I see her, you know. And, and we're lucky we can go to Singapore and see her. But that is that, that cheerio was hard. I don't let her come to the airport. Really? No, 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 no. Because I would be a mess. Yeah. I just try and I try to hold it together. And because it must do. be feel very different leaving her at mm. university compared yeah. to and then leaving her country. leaving her in Singapore is 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 hard. Even though I know she's got the she's got a great job, doing really well in her career, she's doing brilliant. She's got so much more importantly, she's got so many pals and having a great time, and that that makes me feel better. Mm. But it's still really hard leaving her. And, you know, we do both get a bit teary. And, and my husband sort of goes, <clears throat> there's a bit of that. And I can tell he's really, really, you know, he, he won't cry, but he feels it the same. Of course he does. But you, obviously you stay in touch a lot. And... All the time. All the time. That's what's really good. I mean, although I've got that mum thing that I think happens, which is when she phones me, the first thing I say is, what's up? What oh, I need? have that. If my mum and dad phone me at the yeah. same time, I'm yeah, like, yeah, something yeah. has happened. What's up? What's going on? What do you need? And she's like, yeah. I'm just phoning for a chat. It's all right. Everything's <laughs> fine. I'm just phoning to say hello. And I think that's brilliant. I want her to do that. Yeah. And I don't want her to feel beholden. I don't want her to feel that sort of guilt thing that a lot of people feel about their parents. I want her to get in touch with us if she wants to. Mm. Yeah, that's important. Since she's left home, you have been on many adventures. It feels yeah. like it's kind of like it you've reclaimed a little you bit. a bit. I think you can do that as well. Yeah. You know, that's one of the, I guess, one of the benefits when your children do leave is that you do have more time for mm. yourself. And and sometimes, you know, you look at your husband and say, who are you again? <laughs> you know, it's all oh, we still <laughs> like each other. Hooray! Oh, let's reconnect. You know, let's reconnect. And it, there is a little bit of that, yeah. you know, which is actually really good. Mm. So we've done great things. You know, we both went to Antarctica and we've been traveling all over the place you know I did my astronaut training yeah. which is amazing and you know there's been loads and loads of really exciting interviews and lots of really good things that we've done um but we still you know we still go to Singapore and we still see she still wants to be with us which is which is really good that's nice so that that's good and um but obviously with her work and we don't see her as, as, as much when we go over there but but she does a spreadsheet yeah she does a nice. spreadsheet oh yeah yeah <laughs> you will organized. be at this time you will be there and there oh my holiday which is works organized for you because love you know it. if you think about the show it's very love rigid it, time love wise. it I like, I like to get a running order <laughs> even how, on holiday she's how so often do you get to go how often do you see her we try and see her in Singapore about twice a year yep. and then she comes home hopefully if she can once a year but their holidays are you know it's an American company in Asia and the holidays aren't huge but yeah. it's enough for her to come home at Christmas which is great that's nice mm. that's the best time of year to mm. see each other 
And that's just spoiler, completely spoiler. And Steve says, what are you buying her? I'm like, oh, not much. She's like, there is enough, you know, he said it's like a shop in here. She remembered to take it back with her. <laughs> just sit in her just room. Just another wee not tiny in. thing, <laughs> wee tiny wee toty things. Yeah, it's good. Another thing that you've touched on on the show, and you've been a real pioneer, I would say, in bringing the conversation forward, is menopause. Yeah, that's true. You know, we got... Gosh, Giovanna, we got such a huge response to that. I couldn't believe it. And it was really interesting because some of the women, some of the women in the public eye that we approached say, you know, will you come on and talk about this? Wouldn't do it. Really? No, they wouldn't. They didn't want to appear old. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll just do it then. So we got Dr. Hillary to interview me. And then when that wee barrier had been broken, there was other women who did say yes, like Ulrika and Carol Vorderman mm -hmm. were fantastic and talked about it. Very, very, Carol and Ulrika particularly were very, very honest and it yeah. really helped. But the, the response we got was unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And then we had experts on. I mean, Dr. Louise, who's, who's in the book, and she's evangelical and, and, and really knows her stuff. She really does. But I, I, I just talked about my experiences, which were awful. You know, I, I, I became flat. You wouldn't have recognised me, honestly. Yeah, I put yeah. a brave face on because you have to. Yeah. You know, we all put that brave well, face and on. Well, I, I would imagine that. Yeah, it's, you, you do. Know, you go into you just, work. And yeah, it's, you go into work you know, mode because yeah. nobody wants to see me like miserable. That would be terrible. So you, you just obviously you have to go into that as we all do in our workplaces. So I did that, but I was flat. It was just flat. There was no joy. I remember going away for, with Steve for the weekend. We went away to uh, Spain and it was a sunny day. It was in Cordoba, which is beautiful. We were sitting there in the sunshine and I felt blah. And that's when he said, you need to do something about this. I'm losing you. I don't know where you're going. Really? You know, and it was great because he was the one that made me do something about it. Came back, talked to Dr. Hillary, lovely Dr. <laughs> Hillary Jones, where there's a queue of people every morning with ailments. I love that. I oh, totally the poor guy. So I've got this thing. I know. I'm sore elbow. I've got sore mom. I've got sore this. I've got sore that. But he, he just, I told him the symptoms. He went, it's the menopause. Of course it is. How old were you? Um, I must have been then probably about late 40s. Maybe early. To be honest, I got help sort of like early 50s. Okay. So it kind of crept up on me a little bit, I think. And I, I got HRT and I've never looked back. I know it's not for everyone, mm. but for me, it's been an absolute lifesaver. Your body still changes, though. So a couple of years ago, I could feel that old anxiety coming back and that old kind of feeling of, Ooh, you know, like feeling a bit anxious and feeling a bit flat. And I went back and had a, a blood test with Dr. Louise and she just um, tweaked my patches yeah. just tweak them and um, so you do have to you know it's not it's not necessarily you get that one course of treatment or that one treatment that works you, you sometimes have to go back but it's it been crazy amazing as a woman though you kind of go through all of the stuff <sighs> then know. you get pregnant you have a baby you go through all I of know, that the baby leaves then yeah. all of a sudden then you hit with a menopause i know i know it's crazy but um so many women are experiencing it and, and that's why we're living longer and that's yeah. fantastic and not only we're we living longer but the quality of our lives has changed completely i mean when i was a kid and somebody would say to me somebody's 60 i thought of somebody with a little tight gray perm you know with a shapeless <laughs> coat on and, and slippers i'm looking and a, forward to that time you know and a, yeah and a little, a little one of those little tartan shopping bags you know and of course it's not like like that. I mean, you yeah. look at women. For goodness sake, Tina Turner was 80 the other day. Tina Blinking Turner was 80. She looks extraordinary. She looks amazing. She's had certain health problems, but she looks great. Mm. Dionne Warwick's 80. I mean, Joan Collins is over 80. I mean, she's in her late 80s. It's extraordinary. You know, and it's good to have these women, that, you know, shown us that actually be trailblazers and just get on with it. Yeah. Age is nothing. Having had um, Rosie when you did slightly slightly older than your parents, yes, absolutely. Very does it so. does it make you look back? Well, how does it make you think of them when you look back? I don't know how they did it really? at that age. I have no idea how they managed, and especially they had two, and they yeah. had virtually nothing, and they they managed. You know, they really did. Mum and Dad have been fantastic grandparents because they're young. You know, they're really young. So they were really able to help out a lot when she was little. They looked after her for us, you know, quite a lot of family's yeah. work. And it was always... And I think if you've got your mum and your dad there, it's just great because you don't have That's to worry. That's network, yeah. You it's just very don't have different, to worry. I think. It's hard now because, I mean, we were away. Mum and dad would have to come down. Right. So it was all kind of quite planned. So it was never kind of like, oh, I, I've got to dash out to the shop so mum can come round. Yeah. You know, we didn't have that, which I think a lot of people don't because we've all moved away and things have changed and families aren't as close now. Mm -hmm. You know, to, I mean, physically, um, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, so yeah. They're yeah. not as close. They're not next door. Um, but certainly that helped an awful lot. And, and I, think, I think as well, it's awful important when you are a mum and it's particularly a young mum it's all right to ask for help yeah. it's okay to say do you know what I'm feeling a wee bit overwhelmed here and I wouldn't because we've got this mad thing that 
everything's got to be perfect and the house has got to be perfect and that's what I'd always say to MD it's just had a baby who cares mm -hmm. if your house is a mess yeah. nobody nobody cares the tidy police aren't going to come around like Strictly Come Dancing and go 10 or 7 <laughs> or nothing it doesn't matter yeah. And but I was a bit like that I got, I got very kind of like, oh everything has to be you know did you want to appear be... like Supermum totally like you had it all together. totally of course as, as everybody does and it's only when you're in it and you've come out the other side that you realise oh gee why did I waste all that blinking energy <laughs> on tidying up as long as it's clean, yeah. as long as she's not going to catch some terrible disease because your house is dirty. I think it's also <laughs> quite nice when you go to another mum's house so and do it's I. a little bit messy. So do You're I. You're like, oh, it's Yeah, normal. you just think normal. Yeah, it's not, it isn't normal to have a baby and for everything to be utterly pristine and no mm -hmm. little chocolate finger marks everywhere because that's what it's supposed <laughs> to be like. That's what they do and it's fine. So next step is being a being a grandma. I cannot wait. I mean, I don't want to put any pressure on. No, 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 on. no, no. no. Yeah. Cannot, and I've not said a word no, because oh no. my god. <laughs> but I can't. I'm I'm so looking forward to it. Everybody says one of our friends. Um, they're the first ones. They're expecting their grandchild imminently, and they are beside themselves, absolutely beside themselves. Um, and I don't think there's anything quite like it. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Actually, I think it's going to be. It's the next step in life, isn't yeah. it? Um, and I'm going to try not be interfering. I'm really going to try so, so hard not to. I want to be the fun granny. I want to be the granny that they want to go and see and we do yeah. daft things and we do silly things and we say, don't tell your mum that we did this and here's another sweetie. Yeah, I want to do all that. I want to be bad. I want to be naughty. <laughs> Get them to do daft things. <laughs> Have you surprised yourself as a mum? Um, I've surprised myself at how I took to it. I right. didn't think I would. I thought, oh, especially I think if you if you didn't even think about it. No, it wasn't something that I ever thought would happen to me. And I'm surprised at how how I, how well I took to it and how important it was to me. Also surprised at how it made me better at everything. Really? Made me a better person. Made me less selfish. Made me more considerate of other people. Made me have much more empathy with other people. Well, and that's interesting as well, I think, doing what you yeah. do because oh, you people come on and they share oh, they do. so much I themselves. I mean, we're so lucky that people come and share their stories yeah. with us. It trusts us to tell yeah. their stories and um, especially when you know it's quite harrowing stories too um so yeah that, that certainly made me better at that i can you know like sadly when we did do stories like um when uh, madeline mccann's mum and dad kate and jerry came on very very soon after madeline disappeared and that you know i i don't think i would have been able to do the same sort of interview had i not been a mum myself that's really interesting i really don't mm. um and it was oh God, for them it was so so hard but you know they obviously wanted to make sure it's in the public eye and i'll never forget it giovanna i said to them I said, I didn't say to them, but I remember afterwards I said, oh my God, I hope we're not in 10 years time still not knowing what's happened to that little girl. And we, yeah. here we are, and we still don't know. And I, you know, I think about them often, I really do. Um, because it, I, I can't imagine what that must be like, just not knowing mm. about your own child, just not, I mean, it would be better to know one way or another, yeah. obviously. But yeah, but it has made me better, I think, at what I do. There must be so many stories that kind of, affect you in that way oh, having, very much like being so. a mum and just kind of absolutely and linger. sometimes it's so hard not to cry but have you, you ever cried on tv um yes once only once it was after the uh the the, the bombings in manchester mm. and it was a little girl who had been murdered who'd been killed she lives in barra and in the outer hebrides and the they were showing footage of her uh, her body, her coffin, being taken off the beach. And I've been to Barra many times. You land on the beach. It's the most beautiful, peaceful, tranquil, scenic, safe place you could ever imagine in your whole life. And when I saw those pictures, I just lost it. And that's not like me because I don't yeah. do that. Because I don't think it's right for me to do that. But I just saw the that footage and it just brought it home to me. And I think, again, when you're a parent, I couldn't help thinking about our mum and dad. And she'd gone to that concert, you know, she'd gone to that mm -hmm. concert, so excited, yeah. you know, leaving the island and so excited about that. And then they brought her home in the papers, it was the papers and the, you know, the mum and dad and the family and that whole community, you know, completely, completely shattered by what had happened. So, but you, all you can do is is, is sort of like try and tell those stories. That's that's all you can do. And then, um, and just, you know, say just how sorry you are and hope to God that it doesn't happen again. Mm. No, this is the thing awful see I'm just pants because if someone's on here crying I'm crying yeah I know I know and I try not to it's really difficult though yeah. sometimes I think it is difficult and especially I think when you you know when you're in that stage where you've just had a baby mm. or you are going through something like the menopause and you are feeling a bit vulnerable and you're feeling a bit sort of 
not as confident maybe as you should. Yeah, there's been there has been times where it's been hard. I have had to sort of disappear to the back of the set and have a quick bubble mm. and uh, and come back again. I mean, I was crying at my my birthday celebration because we had a live link with Rosie in oh. Singapore and I was sobbing like a, like you know, but that was that was sort of tears of happiness yeah, more, yeah, more yeah. than anything. But that was very very emotional, very emotional for me to see a little face. <laughs> it was hard. It's so cute. Yeah. And obviously now you've got your puppy. You've got your daughter, not even a puppy anymore. He's not a puppy anymore. And I think you'll find he's my son. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, your son. Sorry. He's the son your that son. I've never had. <laughs> yes, Angus, my son. Uh, oh, he's great. He's just so good. And one of the great things, if you're ever feeling a bit down, take your dog for a walk. Mm. If you've got a dog, take him for a walk because you'll feel better. First of all, you're out in the fresh air. Yeah. And like, I mean, I've done the, the walk with Angus. We've got this little walk that we do around the river. I think we've probably done it about 252 times. <laughs> it's like when your kid watches Frozen. Yeah. You watch and watch and watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we've probably done that. And every single time he's excited. And he finds something new to sniff. And he finds something interesting. And he's fascinated by stuff. And it just, you know, it's joyful. They're just yeah. joyful. And it's that thing of when you get home and you get the... The, the the amazing reception you can be away for two minutes or two weeks and you still <laughs> get same. this wee thing going completely <laughs> bananas as if you're the most important person in the whole universe and I love that I love, love it. it Rosie's left home you've yes. got your freedom yes and you get a dog yes absolutely and it's the best thing we ever did I mean, really she, she adores him she absolutely adores him I mean anytime we do a FaceTime she's always like where's Angus show me Angus Aww. that's the first thing how's he doing where is he and we have to turn the phone around so we can show the little <laughs> pictures of him walking around I was on the phone to my dad a little while ago and he said Oh, he'll be so proud of your brother. And I was like, really? Mario, what's what's he done? Oh, he's so good. And then I realised he was at an agility like course with oh. his dog. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> oh, God, <Dad. laughs> I was great. so confused. <laughs> okay, so my next book is um, Letters on Motherhood, which is, as it says on the tin, a letter, a letters all about motherhood. Sure. And um, so I've, uh, I would like to know, if you were going to write a letter on motherhood, who would it be to and what would it say? Oh, gosh, that's really hard. I think it would probably be to Rosie. And I think it would be to tell her the kind of how how I really feel about... Because we don't do that with our kids sometimes. Mm. We don't tell them um, what it was like when she was born. I would tell her exactly what it was like. Um, I'd tell her exactly what I felt. And, and I would tell her about how the feelings of guilt and all of that. And it would be kind of, that's okay. It would be a letter to her, especially should she ever be lucky enough to have, be a mum herself. Um it would be a kind of almost like a reassurance. It would be, don't beat yourself up. Just love your child as much as you can. Just love them. Mm. You know, cuddle them as often as you can. Tell them they're fantastic. Um, always, always. Be, and, and, and never never judge them. And always be open. Always make sure the lines of communication are open so they can come to you and talk to you about anything. Because I always think it's so sad when kids can't do that. You know, if kids, especially kids, let's say kids want to come out or mm. they want to tell their mum and dads that they're transitioning and, and the mums and dads shun them. I don't understand. Yeah. I don't get... First of all, I don't understand how any mum and dad wouldn't know that their child is gay in yeah. the first place because you would. Mm -hmm. and, and anyway, who cares? Mm -hmm. Who cares? They're just your kids. Yeah. You know, they're your kids who you love and that's that. Yeah. Interesting. So I think you'd have to put that down in a letter. Yeah. That letter, Josie. Because I think if you were to say it, you either say it before she becomes a mum and then it's yes. all a bit overwhelming. And yeah, a bit yeah, like, yeah. Why are you it saying would be that? the letter so that she yeah. could refer back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you wouldn't want to kind of do it during because then it's kind of a bit like, yeah. it's all actually having me in a letter. I think feels... there's something very special about yeah. that. And it would have to be a letter, not an email. Oh, yeah, definitely. It has to be a letter that you put in an envelope. Mm. Yes, I think that's very important. <laughs> you must be like, what did you write there, Mum? I can't understand your writing. I know, I know. And <laughs> um, finally, we've uh, finished the podcast on you completing three sentences. Oh, okay. Okay, being a mum means? Always having somebody to love. Since being a mum, I? Have become a much better person. I'm happy when? I'm happy when I'm with my daughter and people that I love not doing anything very much just laughing lovely <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming thank on you. this has been so weird but so fun <laughs> it was great it was a conversation it, it was. wasn't an interview it was a conversation <laughs> which is what you they're do they're the best morning. best ones aren't they thank you amazing thank you my love <laughs>